guys, it's my day off today, so I figured what a perfect time to talk about Jurassic World. Now, I didn't really know what subject to talk about for the first one, so I put a tweet out there asking uh, fellow JP fans what I should talk about. So the first one is from Owen Pratt 93 and he or she, I don't know who it is, <laughs> said, the soundtrack please, and I'm assuming that you want me to talk about my thoughts on uh, Michael Giacchino's score. Well, I absolutely loved it, and I still listen to it a lot now. I mean, I've got it on my phone. I don't own a physical copy of the soundtrack, so whenever I'm walking out and about, I tend to have it uh, on. Um, at the moment, it's that and Snoop Dogg's album, Bush, <laughs> tend to be the two albums. But since June, um, uh, since June, since the album came out, I've been listening to it pretty much non-stop. I absolutely love it. And um, what I love about it the most is the fact that it reminds me or it keeps in the tradition of uh, Jurassic Park soundtracks, um, more so than Jurassic Park 3 in a way. It, it, it reminds me of the Lost World soundtrack because what the Lost, Lost World soundtrack did, which was so good, was it did its own thing and it didn't rely too heavily on you know using the themes from Jurassic Park all too much. You listen to the Lost World soundtrack compared to Jurassic Park and it's a vastly different soundtrack and the main you know, triumphant theme tune of Jurassic Park only comes into it once or twice, I do believe. I know when Hammond uh, realises they're going to the island anyway for a rescue mission rather than a research expedition, you hear the theme tune kick in and uh, the end scene where he gives the Life Finds Away speech, uh, it rolls over the credits. Um, but aside from that, it's got all new themes and it does its own thing. Um, and I really did like that. Um, and I feel like Jura the Jurassic World soundtrack does the same thing. Um, you have the, you know, the big classic Jurassic Park theme tune in there, but it's not in there as much as, you know, it is in like Jurassic Park 3, uh, where it tried to sort of recapture the, the big, uh, you know, ma majesty of the of the island and stuff. Um, where Jurassic World had its own version of uh, its theme tune, so it had its own theme tune and that told its own story. And yeah, I really like that it did its own thing. But not only that, I really do um, like all the subtle nods to um, the Lost World soundtrack as well, because obviously when Blue comes running around the corner to fight the Indominus after she's pinned the T-Rex down, obviously the Lost World theme tune kicks in. And I've heard a few people say that there's some Jurassic Park 3 tunes come in uh, very lightly um, during the uh, Gyrosphere uh, Valley sequence in the movie. But I, I personally, I can't really hear the Jurassic Park 3 theme tune all that much. But yeah, and, and obviously Michael Giacchino puts his own score in there from the Lost World game soundtrack, the one he did for the PlayStation um, during uh, Wrap to Your Heart Out, it plays uh, a bit of the theme tune there. And I do really love all those subtle nods and they, they don't tend to overpower uh, the the new, which is on the soundtrack. So, you know, the, the Lost World theme tune when Blue comes back doesn't feel out of place, it's sort of <laughs> for me it's in the right place I wasn't expecting it so when I watched the film and then blew around around the corner for the first time I had not obviously I knew what was going to happen because of the Maserani thing but I had no idea what the film was going to look or sound like and I was head over heels that he used the um, you know the filmmakers used the Lost World theme tune um, for one of the most triumphant moments in the movie and even like the laboratory hunt theme tune from the, the game soundtrack that Giacchino did um, in Rap to Your Heart didn't feel like it was out of place. It, it merged straight into the soundtrack perfectly. Um, yeah, and I love all the new theme tunes. I think my favorite uh, song on the album is uh, mm, possibly As the Jurassic World Turns, because I think as, when I first heard that I was blown away and it really reminds me of like a western and I did a video on my old YouTube channel um, a while back where I you know had I called it 14 years in the wait waiting where I had all clips of the trilogy with the new soundtrack over it and then when the end of that song has the original Jurassic Park theme kick in it had all new footage of Jurassic World so it's like kind of marrying the franchise together um, in a way and I think I do really love that track and I really love the theme tune when the in, during the Indominus Rex track when um, it's breaking out and in the film is when Ro Owen is running through the paddock with the feet uh, you know following behind him and the music does this sort of like dun 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 like that and 
I just love it. It sounds so epic and powerful. And when I've got my headphones in and I've just got the bass up and everything, it's just kick ass. So that's my thoughts on the soundtrack. I love it. And um, I, admittedly, I prefer it to the Jurassic Park 3 soundtrack. I do like the Jurassic Park 3 soundtrack, but um, I prefer the Jurassic World one. And um, I've actually, I actually do believe that. Um, you know, I've listened to the Jurassic World soundtrack on its own more than any of the others, which is uh, strange to think because I don't, I own them, but I haven't found too many times where I've sat down and listened to the albums as much. I mean, if I guess if I downloaded them, I would be listening to them out and about. The Lost World one I've listened to a hell of a lot, so that might be its contender, but yeah. Anyway, there you go, there's, there's my thoughts on the soundtrack. Um, and finally, Mike Butler asked, uh, he wanted me to talk about the control of the raptors and the change of dynamic from Jurassic Park a la Blackfish. So I'm guessing he's talking about like how the raptors are presented in Jurassic Park to how they are in Jurassic World. Um, I hope that's right. <laughs> um, I've talked about this numerous times on the Jurassic Park podcast that I'm a host of, Jurassic Cast, and uh, there's a video, <laughs> kind of a funny video, that is uh, on Sick Triceratops' channel. Uh, Sick Trike's uh, channel, which is called Muldoon is an Idiot, and it's a jokey video, but I do stand by what I kind of say in that. Um, the best way to look at the change of the raptors uh, and the dynamic of how the, they handle the characters in the movie is to really try to picture them as animals themselves. Um, the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park are treated really badly. Like, um, obviously this wasn't uh, planned by the filmmakers, I don't think, from the outset. Um, in terms of like when they were making Jurassic Park, they were obviously not thinking about <laughs> Owen training raptors and stuff in in Jurassic World. But they have it. But the relationship we have humans to the raptors in the fourth film haven't uh, detracted at all to what happened in the original. You've just got to look at what happens in the movies. And um, what I mean by that is like the raptors in Jurassic Park are treated really badly. They um, you know, the opening scene we see them forklifting one through trees in the middle of the night, not strapped down, bear in mind, because it's running around inside that cage, you know, and there's all these lights and noise and uh, they're shoving it down and they've taken it obviously away from the pack to feed it in this pen. And, uh, you know, they even feed it on its own away from the pack with a crane, um, you know, with the cow. and. The, you know, for these animals, that must be ridiculously confusing. And Owen states this in Jurassic World. He says that, like, you know, they're feeding the Indominus from a crane uh, in its own paddock. And you know, when Claire says your raptors were born in captivity, he's like, yeah, but they've they've got social groups and they they bond with each other and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, animals, like he says, animals raised in isolation, uh, you know, are unpredictable and all this sort of stuff. And that's exactly right because he tr feeds the raptors by hand because he uh, and he feeds them up on a up uh, above them so they can see him but they obviously can't attack him but uh, you know if dinosaurs were similar to birds you know you're feeding them from above they're going to have that sort of mentality of like baby birds being fed by their parents and that's my own fan sort of speculation but it does fit i like the idea that if you t if you were to treat uh, the raptors badly they end up like that you see them in Jurassic Park if they're left in the wild you see them like they are in Lost World Jurassic Park 3 um, Jurassic Park 3 being more so that they're a little bit more intelligent and uh, they're a different breed and they suss things out a little bit easier whereas the Lost World they're way more wild and just like <laughs> you know bloodthirsty uh, but in Jurassic World they've been raised in a way that we've never seen before and they're cautiously uh, cautiously um, I was about to say cautiously optimistic cautiously um, you know uh, trusting Owen but obviously like when the shit hits the fan it does go wrong I mean this group of raptors takes out an entire SWAT team in one <laughs> one fell swoop and so they're still really dangerous but they're but they're I don't know there is this bond that Owen's created through uh, respect uh, between them uh, as he's, uh, as he states many times in the movies, and I do really like that, and I and I don't think it, uh, you know, makes the Raptors any less characters. It builds on them, if anything, um, you know. And 
because you're dealing with a world of dinosaurs where they're genetically engineered, you can always just, you know, say these raptors aren't exactly the same as the ones from the uh, previous films because they're all genetic alterations and every film we've seen them in, they've been different aside from the first two because um, they're males in the second one that we see more prominently and females, whereas we only see the females in the first one. Um, so yeah, I do. I do really like the angle of the raptors in Jurassic World, and I really, I kind of really like the angle of the raptors in all the movies. Um, Jurassic Park Three is the only one that's a bit iffy, but that's only because you know you've got the ending where they pick up the eggs from the humans and then walk away. They don't even like punish the people for taking the eggs or anything like that. And I felt that was a bit weak, but um, I, I kind of like the whole matriarch kind of angle they were going for in Jurassic Park Three with the uh, the the lead sort of a female leading the pack um which i felt like could have been developed a bit more but yeah i guess yeah i guess that's it but um yeah something i've always liked to see and i wrote this in my fan script years ago is um i've always personally liked to have seen what a raptor would be like if it was kicked out of a pack and it was a rogue and i i wrote one where you only ever see in my fan script you only ever saw one raptor in the entire thing but it was like all scarred and like absolutely mental because it's actually been surviving on its own and uh, surviving against all the odds without a pack but then I guess that's what the Indominus kind of is, it is like a raptor without a pack but absolutely giant one um, so that's kind of been handled in a way but I still would like to see like what a raptor would be like on its own um, because the development of the raptors as characters for all the movies is such an interesting angle because as Grant says in Jurassic Park 3 you know if dinosaurs have kept evolving, you know, he theorizes in the movie, fictional movie universe, that raptors, other than humans, would be the dominant species on the planet. And that's why their relationship to us is so interesting on screen, is because um, they are the most intelligent dinosaurs that they've bred at Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. And uh, how do we handle something that is, you know, creeping up the intelligence chain to, to where we are? Um, I'm not saying that like I'd like to see a film where raptors are holding guns and shooting people or like typing at computers or doing tap dances or whatever but um, I like the angle that they've been using in the film so far because they still feel like animals but they don't seem like they're doing it you know overdoing it too much um, yeah it just seemed a bit weird and it would be a nightmare to see a film where raptors are talking oh wait Alan <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vlog, guys. Um, there will be many more Jurassic World vlogs. If you uh, like this vlog and you're a fan of Jurassic Park, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Send in any suggestions you'd like for future vlogs. Um, I always write them down on the list. And uh, these will become more of a regular thing where I've sort of let my hair down a little bit. And, uh, yeah, not worrying about being in space so often. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, guys.